Right, I'm going to talk about um, the problem that's going to arise for a lot of air gunners in the next couple of weeks, possibly even the next couple of months. Now, most people own PCPs, and obviously the vast majority of serious air gunners who own a PCP will recharge their own from a, uh, a dive cylinder like this. Now, that's great, but the trouble is, all the gun shops have closed down, as per the government's orders. Uh, all the ranges are closed, um, all the diving centres are closed, all the paint boarding places are closed. So everywhere that normally you might take your air cylinders to get recharged, is closed. So once you've used all your air in one of these, you've had it. You know, there's nowhere to get them refilled. So... What are the options? Well, one option is to go out and buy a compressor. Now, they've come down in price significantly over the last few years. Um, they're still quite expensive, but they're not as staggeringly expensive now. You can get fairly moderately priced ones. The only trouble is, at the minute, most of those are made in China. And obviously, stuff from China just isn't getting into the country. And everywhere that you look, you'll probably find that they've either sold out or haven't got any stock at all um, because of the coronavirus um, obviously causing problems in the supply chain. So <clears throat> your other option is, of course, to go back to basics and to start using the good old fashioned Springer. Uh, now I've got uh, three of these. I've got a, um, a Walther LGV. I've got the Webley Longbow here that I've been using as a bit of a project gun and I've got um, an old Webley Mark III and these are good fun you know it's nice to get back to shooting these but back to basics um, they, if anything they help improve your shooting because they require a lot more technique than a PCP and they do help uh, improve your technique that's great if you've got a Springer but if you haven't you're in a bit of a pickle because in a fairly short space of time you're going to be without your rifle so if you've got a PCP and that's all you've got you haven't got axe and your dive bottle's getting low and run out and you haven't already got a compressor there is thankfully a third option that you can use to uh, charge your rifle and I'll show you now what it is It's one of these, the air rifle pump. Now, I've just ordered this and had this delivered. This is a hill pump. This is the Mark IV. And uh, this could be just what the doctor ordered. So as you can see, it requires some degree of self-assembly. We've got a couple of bits and pieces in here. We've got some silicon grease. We've got the uh, the base plate, which is made out of sort of ABS reinforced plastic. By the looks of it, we've got a uh, couple of packets of the uh, dry pack stuff. Um, this is the stuff that absorbs any moisture in the air because the trouble with the hand pump is, unlike a compressed air cylinder, if you're not careful, uh, you can't get moisture in the air that comes from a hand pump. And obviously you don't really want to get any moisture on the inside of your rifle. So <clears throat> these Hill Mark IVs um, come with a filtration system that not only does it take any particulate out of the air, it also dries it out and apparently the hill system takes out 90% uh, of the uh, the moisture in the air as you fill in it. So you get two of those, two refills. You get a hill mark for assembly guide, which looks relatively straightforward, step by step to put it together and a step-by-step -step guide to using it and it's very nicely made and it seems 
relatively straightforward it's made for idiots it's a really simple one two three step by step guide to uh, assembling the pump and using the pump that's very good and uh, by the way of course don't forget this is british made um hill pumps are british made made in sheffield then you have get it out one-handed which I can't just bear with me a minute right you have the handle, rubber grips, and it's got a bit of heft to it as well. It's quite a quite chunky, hefty little piece of kit. Feels quite weighty. You've got the filtration unit. Like I say, you pour that uh, filtration compound into there, and then the air goes through that, and it takes the moisture out. And then you've got the main body of the pump. And that has got a fair bit of heft to it. It's got to be said, that's quite a heavy bit of kit. Um, I mean, that is heavy. That is built for durability. That is not a flimsy track type pump that you might use for pumping your bike tires up. This is one chunky monkey. So there you go, so that's the basic components of it. So you've got the main body, handle, filter, base plate, hose, your uh, filtration material, for taking the moisture out, two packets of that, and your instruction leaflet, and uh, a tube of uh, silicon grease. Um, and it looks fairly elementary to putting it together. I think, by the looks of it, you only need one or two Allen keys. So, let's have a little look, shall we? Remove the locking ring, fit the base plate, just push that down to seat it. Replace locking ring by hand, do not use any tools. Attach the handle, which is just a straightforward screw on. I've set connecting hose, spanner to prevent air leaks, so you need a spanner. Uh, tighten the bleed screw by hand. And that's it. I think it's ready to rock and roll. And then this is the one for the dry pack. So, uh, remove from carton, remove locking ring, push down the base plate, replace the locking ring by hand again, tighten it up with a spanner, remove dry pack from carton, and screw the and remove the canister, unscrew and remove the cap, and you just pull that in. Level using a straight edge. Replace the cap. Replace canister on the locking arm, and then that slides over the main body. And then you attach the handle. Tighten the bleed screw, do not use tools. Okay, so that looks pretty straightforward. Not an enormous amount to it. So I'm going to put that together now. And uh, we'll see if I can manage to do it. Right, so I've unscrewed that. That's the locking ring nut. And that was on there. So you just unscrew that, take it off. Pretty straightforward. that goes like that so you just slip it down over the top just slips down over the top
fairly elementary so far. Put that locking ring thing back on. Tighten that up by hand, not with a uh, not with a spanner apparently. Right, so that's on. And go around the front. Connect the hose. You're supposed to use a spanner on that, but I'll just do it up hand tight for now, just while I'm demonstrating how this works. Get your little dry pack unit, unscrew and remove canister. So that just unscrews, seems fairly straightforward. Unscrew that as well off there. So you've got that comes off that. And you take one of your sachets. Fill it with beads. Replace the cap. And then that goes. Screw that. Back onto the uh, little mounting plate thing, whatever it is, like that. So that's screwed on there. And you push it down onto that. So it ends up like that. So you end up with that sort of affair. Screw the handle on. That's fairly straightforward. And hopefully, I think that is pretty much it. And it's that simple. I mean, how long did that take to put it together? Not very long at all. I'm imagining it's going to take considerably longer to pump a gun up with it. But I think the key to these things, from what I can gather, having talked to people that have used them, is to basically just top your gun up every time you use it. So never run it down really low. So if you go out and you fire 30 or 40 shots, um then as soon as you get home recharge it 
so you keep on top of the recharging don't run it down sort of too far and really you don't want to run it down to empty because it will take a long time to pump an empty cylinder up um, on your rifle and basically that is all there is to it and I have to say that it is a very, very sturdy bit of kit. You know, that is really built to last. Um, so, I will be trying that out uh, when I've next used the rifle and needs topping up. And hopefully, having this, even if it's just an emergency, as an emergency backstop, um, one of these dead handy. You know, you could even chuck it in the car. Um, and if you're out for a full day, you know, it's so easy just to um, have that in the boot, whip it out, put, I don't know, 20, 30 pumps into your rifle, whatever it takes, and have a little sit down, a cup of coffee, and away you go. I think the key with this is that you do it in sort of stages of um, up to 10 pumps and then rest because you don't want to heat the air up um, as you're charging it. Um, because that's when you start, if you're going to get any moisture in your gun, that's when you'll start to see it if you heat the air up. So the idea is to do it nice and slow, take your time. And don't try and, you know, be a sort of show-off Charles Atlas sort of thing and whack at super high speed 80 pumps into your gun. It's slow and steady, wins the race with this sort of system, I think. Um, so there you go, the Hill Mark IV pump. Assembled literally in, well... A couple of minutes so easy to put together and it is properly made to last that is a sturdy and durable bit of kit and hopefully that'll see see me through until uh, this um, this crisis is over and everything returns to normal and your gun shop opens again and we're just back to normality which uh, can't come soon enough really so keep safe and uh, like I say, if you do find yourself in the situation where your cylinder's running low and you're wondering what the hell to do because you can't find anywhere to fill your cylinder and you can't find anywhere that's selling a compressor, then the answer is get one of these. Um, because, you know, as a hand, even if even when things are back together, back to normal, you know, it only takes your gunsmith or wherever you regularly go to get your cylinder filled to go on holiday for a couple of weeks or just to be ill or just to be, you know, whatever. Um, or their compressor to break down and it happens. Um, and suddenly you find yourself where you can't get your guns filled. So one of these dead handy to just have in the back of the wardrobe as an emergency backup. Um, I'm surprised it took me so long to get one really. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, any questions or comments, all gratefully received. Um, and uh, keep safe, keep well. And that really applies at the minute. And, uh, you know, just be careful.